speculations of alien life since pretty much the beginning of time. As we've gone through the years, more proof has shown up. Welcome back, Most Amazing Crew. I'm Kennedy. And I'm Emily. And with all that in mind, here's our countdown to the top 10 dark signs of alien planets throughout history. Number 10. The Viking Mars Landers Viking 1 and 2 were a pair of NASA Mars landers and orbiters that launched in 1975 and arrived in 1976. The orbiters created global maps while the landers examined the surface up close. The landers performed ambitious chemistry experiments to search for life. Tests performed on Martin soil samples by NASA's Viking landers hinted at chemical evidence of life. One experiment mixed soil with radioactive carbon labeled nutrients, then tested for the production of radioactive methane gas. The test reported a positive result. The production of radioactive methane suggests that something in the soil was metabolizing the nutrients and producing radioactive gas. But other experiments on board failed to find any evidence of life, so NASA declared the result a false positive. Despite that, one of the original scientists and others who have since reanalyzed the data still stand by the finding. They argue that the other experiments on board were ill-equipped to search for evidence of organic molecules, a key indicator of life. Next up at number 9, we have the Sumerian Civilization. The ancient Sumerians were a group of people that suddenly became established in Mesopotamia circa 2900 BCE. No one is quite sure where they came from originally, but they believed and documented that their origins were not from planet Earth. According to ancient texts, the Sumerians were created by an alien race called the Anunnaki, who came to Earth after their planet, Niburu, collided with another planet in the solar system. The aliens found themselves in short supply of gold, which they needed in their atmosphere, and saw that Earth was in high supply. So they landed here and created a new species that was half alien, half human, to mine the gold for them. Now, it does sound a little crazy, but the Sumerians did have advanced scientific, agricultural, and technological knowledge, as well as an acute understanding of the solar system, which was highly advanced at their time. Researchers have recorded clay pot batteries that still contained electrodes, a flyable model airplane, as well as an unexplainable capability to cut large stones with exact precision. Not to mention that rockets, airplanes, and helicopters were all depicted on certain artifacts from the time too. Even stranger is that there is a mitochondrial DNA evidence linked to a woman in Africa dating more than 100,000 years back near a gold mine, while of course we might never know for sure, the legend of the Anunnaki has made even some of the biggest skeptics question the reality of aliens. Number 8. Radio signal received three times from the same region of space. In February 2003, astronomers with the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence SETI, project used a massive telescope in Puerto Rico to re-examine 200 sections of the sky which had all previously yielded unexplained radio signals. These signals had all disappeared except for one, which had become stronger. The signal, widely thought to be the best candidate for alien contact, comes from a spot between the constellations Pisces and Aries, where there are no obvious stars or planets. Curiously, the signal is at one of the frequencies that hydrogen, the most common element, absorbs and emits energy. Some astronomers believe that this is a very likely frequency at which aliens wishing to be noticed would transmit. Nevertheless, there is a good chance the signal is a never seen before natural phenomenon, but I'd like to think that it's aliens. Coming in at number 7, V Manas. There are a few ancient epics from India that depict a great battle taking place in the sky. The battle was fought using flying machines of war called V Manas, and the legend says that they fought against strange creatures that used nuclear like explosions and weapons that no one had ever seen on Earth before. First off, V Manas are depicted in multiple texts throughout history, and while we don't know for sure, there are some people that think they could have been real. Manuals with detailed explanation of how they work have been uncovered, and early aircrafts even used knowledge outlined by the mythical flying machines. But what about this alien battle? Well, it allegedly took place in the city of 
Dwarka, created by Lord Krishna. Dwarka was being attacked from the sky with unknown weapons until finally Krishna fired at the spacecraft until it left the atmosphere. After some time, Krishna then departed Earth and the ocean consumed the city of Dwarka. Now, for many years, Dwarka was considered to be a myth. That was until the Archaeological Survey of India established the presence of a submerged city near the temple town of Dwarka and found the remains of a citadel wall and rubbles of a palace about 40 to 60 feet deep in the ocean. So maybe there really was an alien sky battle after all. Number 6. The Drake Equation Back in 1961, astronomer Frank Drake devised an equation by which he could estimate the likelihood of the existence of alien life, taking into account a number of factors, including the average number of planets able to support life and the fraction that could go on to support intelligent life. It was made not for the purpose for quantifying the number of civilizations, but as a way to stimulate scientific dialogue at the first scientific meeting on the search for extraterrestrial intelligence (SETI). The equation summarizes the main concepts which scientists must contemplate when considering the question of other radio communicative life. Although it was devised in 1961, it wasn't implemented until 2001. The result? Statistically, hundreds of thousands of such planets should technically exist. So with all these planets existing, there has to be aliens. Right? Next up at number 5, the Madonna with Saint Giovannino. Dating back to the 15th century, this iconic painting is arguably one of the most debated depictions of alien life on Earth. Likely painted by Domenico Ghilandio, I hope I said that right. I mean, there is debate there too, but that's for another story. As you can see, it depicts the Madonna with baby Jesus and Saint John. But if you zoom into that top right corner, you'll notice something very strange. There is an unnamed man shielding his eyes from what looks like a bright light in the sky, and beside him is a dog staring up at the same shining object. The object appears to be strangely similar to most modern depictions of a UFO, painted as a dark oval with light rays shooting out from every angle. Now, now, it wasn't unusual for the time to paint angels or other celestial beings brightly shining down on us from the sky, but as this specific painting appears to have no such addition to the light and is simply a strangely specific flying saucer, it has led many to believe that the painter was depicting a real life alien sighting. What do you think? Number 4, Area 51. Of course, I have to bring up Area 51. Would it really be an alien video without mentioning it? Area 51 is a secret US Air Force military installation located at Groom Lake in southern Nevada. It's administered by Edwards Air Force Base in southern California. The installation has been the focus of numerous conspiracies involving extraterrestrial life, though its only confirmed use is as a flight testing facility. For years, there was speculation about the installation especially amid growing reports of UFO sightings in the vicinity. The site became known as Area 51. Conspiracy theories gained support in the late 1980s when a man alleging to have worked at the installation claimed the government was examining a recovered alien spacecraft. In 2013, the US government officially acknowledged the existence of Area 51. That year, the National Security Archive at George Washington University obtained through the Freedom of Information Act a formally classified CIA a document that chronicled the history of the U-2 spy plane. A heavily redacted version had previously been released in 1998. Now, according to the report, in 1955, the remote site, which included an airfield not used by the military since World War II, was selected in order to test the U-2. Test flights of that spy plane and subsequent aircraft accounted for many of the UFO sightings in the area. The U-2 could reach altitudes much higher than any other planes at a time, but is that just a cover-up? Area 51 is so mysterious, it wouldn't surprise me if they were lying. Coming in at number 3 is the WOW signal. Back in 1977, astronomer Jerry Eman was researching at the Ohio State University when an incredible and unexplainable radio signal was detected using the school's Big Ear Telescope. Now, In those days, information was run through what was called an IBM 1130 mainframe computer before being printed on paper and then studied by hand. Upon reviewing the findings, Jerry came across something he had never seen before. There in a vertical column was the sequence 6EQUJ5. Jerry was flabbergasted and immediately circled the sequence and wrote WOW with an exclamation point right beside it. 
Hence the name. The signal they picked up had come from nearly 220 million light years away, and there was no explanation as to how or why a radio signal could be detected from that distance. It immediately became a sensation in both the science community and the rest of the world, and was used to support the search for alien life in the universe. Jerry himself says he's convinced that it certainly has the potential to be the first signal from extraterrestrial intelligence, but despite best efforts, no such signal has ever been seen since, which only makes it all the more intriguing. Number 2. Astronauts have seen them So there are tons of registered sightings of UFOs, but majority of the time there's a thorough debunking accompanying them or they're just a plain old hoax. But throughout history there have been a number that have been harder to explain away. From the 1853 sighting by a number of students and professor at the Tennessee College campus, to the Stephenville Lights case from 2008, with over 200 witnesses spotting the UFO including three policemen. Now, if you're going to believe any reports of UFOs, you might as well trust those coming from the men who have actually been to space. The list of those who have made claims of sightings include Edgar Mitchell, Katie Coleman, and Dr. Brian O'Leary, many also referencing government knowledge of alien existence and cover-ups. But one experience that stands out is from Buzz Aldrin. He has spoken of his own experience on board the Apollo 11 in 1969 when he said they saw something flying alongside them. At first, they thought it was the final stage of the detached rocket, until Mission Control confirmed it was 6,000 miles away from that. Hey, if you're going to believe anyone about aliens and UFOs, it should certainly be an astronaut. And last up today in our number one spot is the mysterious men in black. There are several different accounts from people starting around the 1950s where they uncovered something they believed to be linked to proof of alien existence, only to be visited by strange men in black soon after. One of the most famous instances was that of Dr. Albert Bender. Bender was a very intelligent researcher with an interest in aliens and UFOs, so much so that he wrote for a magazine called Space Review and even founded the International Flying Saucer Bureau. It started off very successfully. Bender began to gather lots of alleged evidence related to UFOs, but soon he began to see strange men watching him around his town, reportedly with glowing eyes. Bender wasn't too nervous about the strange phenomenon until one night in 1953 when three men in black showed up at his house. The mysterious men looked at first to be government agents, but he soon discovered they were something from a completely different realm. The men made it clear to Bender that he was to immediately stop all UFO research and investigation and to cease any publishing. They then confiscated some of his findings before threatening him once more and vanishing. Bender was so afraid of the experience that he immediately halted all publishings, quit ufology, and turned into a completely different man, terrified of the world and everything in it. Years later, he published a book about his experience with the men in black and then went on to manage a motel and never touched extraterrestrial research ever again. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I definitely believe that there's aliens now. There, there's so much be. proof. There's it so has to proof. be. <laughs> Tell us what you think in the comments below. And make sure to like and subscribe. <laughs>